Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Therapeutic Modalities on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This video is going to be all about cryotherapy, which is just a fancy term for using cold as a therapeutic modality. So anytime we use something cold like an ice pack to get some positive benefit, that is cryotherapy. Now before we go any further, let's talk about the two major indications for using cryotherapy, and those are pain and inflammation. Now in another video, we talked about thermotherapy, which is the use of heat. That can also be used to reduce pain. Cryotherapy can also be used to reduce pain, but one of the big differences between the two is that thermotherapy, heat, is not for reducing inflammation. In fact, thermotherapy or heat can actually maintain, or in some cases, increase inflammation. Remember, one of the cardinal signs of inflammation is heat or warmth. Cold or cryotherapy actually can reduce inflammation. So if one part of the body has some inflammation and you want to get that inflammation to go down, for example, if it's excessive, then cryotherapy is a good choice to do that, and it can also relieve some of the pain associated with that inflammation. Now, what are the general effects of cryotherapy? Well, for the most part, they're the exact opposite of thermotherapy. So we've got these parameters over here, and let's actually compare the two. So obviously, cryotherapy is cold, so it's going to decrease the temperature, again, the opposite of heat. In terms of vascular tone, so whether blood vessels are dilated or constricted, cryotherapy results in vasoconstriction only in the area that you're applying the cold. So for example, if you put this ice pack right here on your lower back, it's not going to cause vasoconstriction in your arm. Okay? It's just going to be in the area where the ice pack is. Okay? But the reason you get constriction is because those blood vessels are actually going to decrease in diameter. They're going to constrict to hold on to what heat is left. So that's going to be a reflexive thing that happens when you actually put an ice pack or something like that on it. In heat therapy, we get vasodilation. Now, a lot of tissue also has this protein called collagen, which provides tensile strength, right? Well, cryotherapy actually decreases the compliance of the collagen. So compliance is the ability to stretch. And so by decreasing the compliance of collagen, it results more in stiffening. And when we talked about thermotherapy, remember that is actually used to loosen soft tissues, whereas cryotherapy actually results in them stiffening up a little bit. Okay? Now, in terms of metabolic rates, so consumption of oxygen or VO2, cryotherapy overall slows down metabolism. Okay? So you get a decrease in metabolic rate in the area where you're applying the ice pack. Again, if you put it on the lower back, you're not going to get these effects in the legs or the arm. It's just going to be in the place where we put that modality. But by decreasing metabolic rate, we get less oxygen consumption in that area. Cryotherapy also results in increased blood viscosity. And so in the area that we're treating, we get a decreased flow rate of blood. Not pathologically slow, but it does decrease the flow of blood in that area. Also, cryotherapy decreases muscle tone. Notice that this is one of the common features between cryo and thermotherapy. They both decrease muscle tone. They also both decrease pain. So those are the two factors here that are common between the two different types of therapy. But cryotherapy results in decreased muscle fatigue. So actually in the cold, muscles actually fatigue more slowly, whereas in the heat, so thermotherapy, muscles actually fatigue uh, more quickly, especially if that heat is prolonged. Okay. Also notice that for cryotherapy, we get a decreased flow of blood and lymph, again, this is due to increased viscosity that we talked about and overall decreased kinetic energy. This is the opposite of what we see for heat. And then with cryotherapy, we get decreased capillary permeability and blood cell motility. This last one's not as important. What is important to understand, though, is that cryotherapy, like thermotherapy, can be used to decrease pain, and then cryotherapy can also be used to treat inflammation. So these are our four major cryotherapeutic modalities. Before we get into all of these, let's actually discuss a couple of things that are often overlooked that we need to understand. So let's say we put one of these modalities on a patient. So here's a cold pack on the left lower back. 
we need to understand what the patient is expected to feel because they need to know what they're supposed to feel. So if anything is abnormal, they can tell us to stop and then we stop the treatment. So here's kind of a flow chart of how sensation is going to change in this area where we're applying the cold. So initially, it's just going to be an uncomfortable cold. Okay? We've all had that feeling. As we leave this cold pack on there, the uncomfortable cold feeling is going to progress to a stinging feeling. And then eventually, the stinging feeling is going to progress to burning or aching. And then from there, eventually, it will stop at numbness. Okay? In many treatments, we're actually looking for this numbness. And different cryotherapeutic modalities will actually achieve this numbness at different times. So we need to be aware of that. So this is kind of the progression of how sensation is going to change in that area. The other thing that we need to understand are the contraindications to cryotherapy and the precautions. The absolute contraindications are things you would never, ever, ever do, regardless of where on the patient's body you're actually applying the cold. And those are cold hypersensitivity, cold intolerance, cryoglobulinemia, paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria, and Raynaud's disease, also called Raynaud's phenomena. Now these first two right here, these are actually what we might see in a condition like sickle cell anemia. So normally those people are going to have less tolerance of cold to begin with. However, when those patients are actually in what we call a sickle cell crisis, they become extremely susceptible uh, to the effects of cold. So they have both cold hyper hypersensitivity and cold intolerance. So someone with that condition, especially in a crisis, you would never use cryotherapy regardless of where on the body it might be indicated. Now, relative contraindications include regenerating peripheral nerves, circulatory compromise, or peripheral vascular disease. These depend on where on the body you're actually applying the cold. So for example, if you have regenerating peripheral nerves, let's say in the posterior forearm, then you would never ever apply cryotherapy on the posterior forearm. Now, you could still apply it on the leg, on the back, on the neck, but basically anywhere where you have these three things, you would not apply cryotherapy. The precautions are just be careful. So the general precautions are impaired mentation, like cognitive decline. Basically, if they're not alert and oriented times four, uh, you want to be really careful when you're using this because they may not be able to tell you if something's wrong. They've got cognitive decline. Also, very young or very old patients, these populations may actually have lower sensation than the normal population. And so with lowered sensation, if something over here on the far right is not going according to plan, they may not be able to tell you. Also, very young patients uh, may not even be able to talk yet if you're doing this on a really, really young individual. And then the relative precautions would be poor sensation in that area, hypertension, open wounds, or if it's over the superficial main branch of a nerve, like the superficial radial nerve, okay, as it approaches the surface of the skin in the anatomical snuff box, for example. Now, hypertension would be a precaution because what did we say one of the effects of cryotherapy was? Vasoconstriction. And so if there's hypertension, what does vasoconstriction do to blood pressure? It increases blood pressure. Okay, so that's a precaution there. And then in terms of poor sensation, again, uh, if the patient doesn't have sensation in an area, they may not be able to tell you if this is progressing as planned and something could go wrong. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.